Do do do. So, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this video because I don't need headaches, but I've noticed that C++ programmers tend to be very angry. I don't know why. Maybe it's just uh, anecdotal. I don't know. Uh, I went and I spoke to a friend of mine who was a C++ programmer, asked him about it. He got very angry at me, started shouting me down. I've noticed that over the years. I've been doing videos for the longest time, and you know, I put out videos sometimes that are a little controversial. But the most angry people is the C++ people. Even when I'm not talking about the language per se, I'm talking about uh, jobs and so forth. What can you expect in the C++ world in terms of jobs? And they get really, uh, sometimes they get really snippy at me. Like just the last one I did. Sure enough, I expect it all the time. I'm wondering. No, I'm not wondering. I have an idea. My theory why C++ developers tend to be more angry than, let's say, a JavaScript developers or Python developers. You know, interestingly enough, Ruby developers tend to be the most happy. Yeah, I'm serious. I have found Ruby developers to be very happy people. They, uh, I hit on Ruby all the time, just for fun. And uh, they don't care. They're like, eh, that's cool. You know, it's weird. We're C++ developers. I say, you know, C++, it's kind of old. What? Uncle Steph, you're a loser. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's one of these weird realities. So the question I want to answer in this video is, why are C++ developers angry, tend to be angry, and why are Ruby developers happy? Now, you'd think it would be the opposite, right? Because there's tons and tons and tons of C++ jobs, even in the age of AI. But the Ruby jobs, not nearly as many. I think the answer has to do with two things. A, the job to developer ratio. And number two, number two is that um, the type of person that is attracted to C++ is probably very different than the type of person attracted to Ruby. Hey, hey, this video is sponsored by me and my ultra profound lizard wizard course. I have built courses for years. I've been mentoring people for many years. I've mentored people into huge corporations. I've mentored people to build billion dollar corporations. The most important course I've ever put out is called the Lizard Wizard because it trains you in the fundamentals of your brain, how it works. It will allow you to master your fundamental impulses, which will make you learn much more quickly, will make you much more competent uh, at work, uh, in your dating life, in your health life, etc. It will literally open your eyes up to a new reality and most importantly, very practical. So you're not just going to learn the theoretical stuff, you're going to learn how to apply it in a real world and you're going to have profound impacts as everybody has who have done the course. So check it out, Lizard Wizard, very entertaining. At the very least, you're going to be going, wow, holy, wow. This stuff is based on the latest research in psychology, my martial arts background and meditation background, and just even my business background. You'll see in the course, it all comes together and it's very effective. So Lizard Wizard, check it out below. I'm going to provide a coupon, a nice sweet coupon for you so you can get it at a super good price. You can change your life at a, dis at a discount, at a bargain. I think the Ruby developers are pretty happy because, you know, let's face it, Ruby is actually uh, quite a fun programming language to develop in. Uh, Ruby runs into problems when you want to do uh, a lot of concurrent, uh, when you have a lot of concurrency, meaning a lot of people hitting your app at the same time, Ruby can fall. But most people will never develop apps that require such load uh, capacity. You know, C++, on the other hand, it's, it's arguably the most performant of the languages out there. Maybe Swift, apparently, can be as performant, but it's super performant, right? Rust, I guess Rust is. But C++ programming is not fun. It's not fun. This is what C, that now, I just said that, and I'm telling you, there's going to be some C++ guys who are going to be super angry at me for saying that. I have heard it from the horse's mouth, but they have said, no, 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 I don't want to do C++. I think the only thing worse than C++ is assembler, is assembler programming in terms of lack of fun. I had a friend of mine who was an assembler programmer and quite good at it. 
and he kept getting hired to do assembly work and he didn't want to do it so he took it off his resume he said, i hate this stuff so yeah i think c plus plus programmers are a little angry because i think it's a frustrating programming language to work with comment below c plus pro c plus plus programmer hates that comment i don't know I don't know. I'm not a C++ programmer. I, I've done the equivalent of Hello World, poked around with it a little bit, and when I started seeing the memory management and the, the pointers. I said, okay, enough of this. I prefer higher level languages. Um, all this, by the way, these distinctions and so forth, besides, uh, besides just having an understanding of when it makes sense to use a C++ for a JavaScript and so on, these things are becoming more and more uh, moot because um, because of AI, right? I think you should learn the fundamentals of the web. That's my uh, first uh, choice today in 2025 as we record this in August. And then I'd be leaning heavy into uh, AI, specifically AI first development where you're not so much leveraging a traditional languages and frameworks and libraries, what you're doing is you're leveraging AI models and agents and MCP and other protocols that are there to uh, manage the flow of applications in the AI context. That's what I would be doing today. Now, I'm not saying that traditional developers is going away. It's not going away. There's plenty of it out there right now. So, so why... Are C++ developers angry? I think the other reason, and the main reason, and all joking aside, is that the type of person that gets into C++, they may be a little bit more on the spectrum. I have been too. In the past, I was very angry Steph. Cousin Steph, I'm Uncle Steph right now. Cousin Steph was a little bit more on the spectrum, so I didn't understand the nuances of communication, shall we say. And when you don't understand the nuances of communication, you may come off as angry when you're not really angry. You're just expressing an opinion. A lot of times you're angry too, but I think that's a big part of it as well. Whereas I think Ruby programmers, they're more like hippies. They're more like hippies and they're kind of cool and you know they're pretty happy if they can you know go watch a superhero film, play some Call of Duty or something. And Ruby, you know, I, I built an app in Ruby in the past, and it was a, an app that didn't have a lot of concurrency, and it was a command line app. I, it ran through the command line, and it was super productive. Holy moly. It got, I was productive in the sense that I was able to get the stuff done super fast. It's still relevant. Um, today, I actually prefer Ruby syntax over its direct competitor, Python. Python, though, it has, is, is, is the king. Python is by far the king. Partly because um, Python has a huge ecosystem of uh, libraries and modules. That is a big part of Python's strengths. I never liked the, uh, the use of white space and carriage returns for, uh, for chunking up your code. I prefer end statements in Ruby. I prefer a curly braces overall. I'm like a JavaScript guy, you know, a Java guy. Curly braces, that's where it's at. Anyway, there you go. That's the story, guys. I think that's why C++ programmers are very angry and why uh, Ruby programmers are not angry. You figure, you know, with, re with regards to jobs, there's so few Ruby jobs out there, but there's probably a lot less Ruby programmers out there. So if you know Ruby and you're competent, you could probably get a job, and I'm not advocating for Ruby, but you could probably get a job because it's just so few Ruby developers out there. Anyway, that's it. That's the uh, bit of a tongue-in-cheek in this video. A lot of C++ programmers won't understand this because, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's it. Whatever language you decide to work with, never work with Ruby and uh, get into the AI stuff. I would suggest what I call Model 2, get into the agentic agent development, get into AI first development, 
where you're orchestrating and coordinating the various AI models as they execute on things, as I've talked about in other videos. I think the future development is going to be a, a hybrid approach where you're going to use some traditional infrastructure. So you may use React in some parts of it. You may use a full stack framework a little bit here and there. But uh, you also, I think GUI is going to fade a little bit. I think you're going to have a new uh, human language interfaces, whether you are typing in communication with the AIs to execute on the jobs or you uh, voice. That's also here now. So I can see a lot of applications that way. For example, with the meta glasses, uh, I can see where you're starting to execute commands by just talking to, uh, to the AI to get things done. Uh, I've been looking at some really interesting implementations in that regard. Whatever you do, whatever language, C++, uh, Ruby, JavaScript, etc., they're all cool. They all have their points. Um, but definitely just lean into the AI, uh, whether you're augmenting your traditional development or you're actually doing the whole AI-centric development first where you're using chat windows. So it's, it's much less about GUI, much more about human interfaces, whether you're typing out or you're talking to the application to get things done. Kind of like Star Trek where you go, computer, please analyze this data and output a chart for me. Boom, there it goes. That's actually possible today now.